Uh, well, hello, everybody. Um, and uh, in case you don't know who I am, uh, Robin Duke Woolley, I'm uh, CEO of Beecham Research. Uh, Beecham Research uh, specializes in the M2M and IoT sector, and we do uh, research throughout the world. Uh, so, um, Z um, actually introduced my subject uh, rather well because uh, I can pick up uh, some of the themes where he left off. Uh, I'm going to talk about wearable technology. Uh, it's perhaps not a subject that many of you are involved with uh, at the moment, but uh, I think uh, as part of the development of the IoT sector, the IoT market, and we're not entirely sure what that is at the moment, I think, a lot of us, um, I think that uh, uh, wearable technology is going to play a, a very big part. Uh, it's going to be what connects the individual to, uh, to the network uh, in a way that the uh, individual would like to, uh, to see. Um, so uh, I think uh, it's going to be uh, everywhere. Uh, it's going to be uh, affecting uh, lifestyles, um, and it's not that far away. Um, so uh, I think it's probably useful just to say um, what it is and what it isn't. So, this doesn't work. Oh, there we go. Um, so the first picture is uh, uh, what, um, what it is, or what it isn't, is um, this, this is a very functional view about um, uh, something that you can wear, but does that make it wearable technology? Um, and uh, this picture here is uh, um, uh, something that uh, an athlete is wearing while he's uh, um, uh, going around a track or something like that. Um, uh, and the question there is, how wearable is that for how long? Um, it may be short term, but perhaps not something that you'd want to wear all the time. Um, and, and this one too is uh, very much of the same sort of uh, thing. Um, moving on to um, examples of what we would call wearable technology, um, there's uh, this type of um, bracelet which you uh, can put on and then it measures um, your pulse and uh, other vital signs uh, and then you can get some sort of monitoring. Uh, this is a, um, what's called a Twitter dress, so uh, for those of you that want to uh, have your messages displayed while you're uh, walking around a room, then uh, that's what that's for. Uh, it could just be lights that, uh, that light up as well. So it's, it's a fashion type of statement. Um, this is uh, an insole for a shoe. Um, and that can be used for all sorts of things, like um, uh, it could be used for healthcare, so uh, and measuring gait, how you walk. Uh, but perhaps um, more surprisingly, it can also be used for security. Um, we all walk in particular ways that are unique to us. You may not realize this, but the way that you walk is quite unique. And uh, uh, that is measured by this sort of thing. And then the profile can be used as a security feature. So there's all sorts of opportunities there. And then these are different forms of sensors that you might wear uh, for different things. These, of course, are sort of watches. But then, you know, there's all sorts of ideas about watches around at the moment. Um, then we have uh, things like head-up displays. Uh, so we've got two here. Um, uh, this one is, uh, has got a little pod that uh, comes out, and then this is the screen that you look at. Uh, this, of course, is, uh, is Google Glass that everybody's getting terribly excited about. Um, and uh, it, it, it has pretty much the same sort of function, uh, but it's closer to, and it's slightly um, more um, enclosed, but not much more. Um, I don't know what you think about those. I don't know whether you'd like to wear one of those. I wouldn't, but uh, that's up to us. That's up to the individual. Um, the point that uh, we want to make about all of this is um, the technology is moving from uh, what we call from functional to, uh, to usable uh, to wearable. And uh, in the early days, uh, very clunky stuff. Um, you could wear it, but uh, with difficulty. Uh, it was basically functional. Um, the usable era, I think, was probably introduced with the iPhone, the Apple iPhone, and the uh, apps that uh, they introduced, which then has been um, obviously uh, introduced by everybody else as well. So that's, that's got the, the usable side. But now we come to the wearable side, which is um, uh, wearing um, electronics 
in a way that is um, not uh, inhibiting your lifestyle, that uh, you can carry on doing what you're doing, um, but it provides useful information both to you and to others uh, about you. Um, and there are a lot of areas where this could be uh, useful. Um, but until it becomes unobtrusive, uh, until it becomes, as Zee was saying, more fashionable, uh, it's very unlikely that it's going to take off in very large volumes. So uh, some time ago, Beecham Research introduced um, a sector map for the M2M marketplace, and we thought we'd do something similar for uh, wearable technology. So uh, this is the result of that. Uh, those of you at the back of the room will not be able to see the text, so don't try. Uh, those of you at the front of the room may not be able to see it either, but you'll you already see the pretty colors, so that's fine. So let me read it out to you. Uh, this is the security safety sector. This is the medical sector, and this is the area that Z was talking about earlier on. Uh, the wellness sector, uh, sport fitness, uh, lifestyle computing, uh, communication, and what we call the glamour sector, which is uh, where the Twitter dress goes and, uh, and other things of that nature. Now, what we're trying to get across here is that this is a big market opportunity. There are lots and lots of applications here. So uh, that, those are the sectors, but then these are the uh, application groups that we talk about. And there are 30 of those, don't need to count them, there are 30 of those. And then uh, we go further out to uh, products that are actually out in the marketplace now. These are examples of stuff that's out there now, fairly early days for this stuff, but there's a lot of it out there, and uh, uh, there's going to be more. So down here, we have head-up display glasses, which is Google Glass and the other product that I showed you just now. Over here, there's a smartwatch. A lot of activity going on in the smartwatch area, the iWatch area, whatever you call it, watch area uh, at the moment. But, but note, this is just one of the application areas. It's not the whole market. And um, uh, of, of great interest is, uh, as Z was saying, the medical sector, because if you can wear something uh, less obtrusively, you're likely to wear it for longer, more often. And if you can get somebody to wear something all the time, there's continuous monitoring, much more likelihood that it'll actually be useful. So uh, that's a very important aspect of that market. It's also an important uh, opportunity in the wellness market. Um, now, I'm not going to go through every one of these, but um, uh, there is a difference between medical and, uh, and wellness. They're both associated with health, but whereas this is to do with uh, um, uh, uh, medical systems, if you like, lots of regulation, stuff like that in that area, but wellness is much more consumer orientated and what the consumer wants to do with, the, with their data. So moving on, you won't be able to read this either, but uh, I'll just uh, show you that so there is a definition here, and you can get the slides later, uh, of each of these sectors and how they differ between each, uh, between each sector. Uh, now, one of the points that uh, I would like to mention, no pointer, um, is um, other specialist professional uses. Uh, and this is quite important because there are lots and lots of business applications out there that are being used, do use wearable technology. Sometimes it's a bit clunky, but it nevertheless improves efficiency in operations. So you'll see that in courier activities, in um, uh, security uh, areas, in um, uh, a, a number of other areas that I can't think of right now, um, there are uh, specialist applications that use uh, early stage wearable technology. So what we're going to see is uh, quite a lot of this um, starting to take off more in the business sector first and then being applied to uh, consumer sectors. So uh, it's not something that is just for the consumer. So um, one of the things that we are concerned about is that although wearable technology has the potential to be cool, exciting, and add much to the, uh, to, to, to the experience, 
And it is, we think, an extension of IoT to the individual. Um, in general, there is a relatively poor implementation at the design stage, and that uh, kind of lets down the potential. So uh, the technology, we think, will only be adopted and succeed if it feels complementary to our lifestyles and is not intrusive. And uh, essential uh, to achieving that is um, uh, stylish design, clever integration of technology functions into products that are genuinely desirable. Uh, we think the mass consumer market is trend-driven and not necessarily very tech-aware. So uh, having something that looks geeky, something that uh, looks a little bit clunky, is not going to become a mass consumer item. So the key questions as, we are, as far as we're concerned is, uh, who will buy wearable tech and why? Uh, what are the true market prospects? Uh, what is required to develop this market? Uh, what will truly help it grow? Uh, what is true for uh, wearable technology is also true for other technology markets, uh, particularly those associated with consumers. Um, and this includes the whole area of, uh, of Internet of Things. Now, there have been lots of forecasts about uh, wearable tech, uh, lots of um, huge numbers. Uh, I have to say that it depends what you, what you include in wearable technology. So, for example, if you include a Bluetooth headset, uh, ear, earplug, as, uh, as being wearable technology, then the market is already quite large. Um, if you don't include anything to do with headsets, it's really quite small. So I think that um, part of the problem that we have with the um, rather large uh, forecasts for uh, early stage market over the next few years is down to definitions of what people uh, define as wearable tech and not. We, we don't include things like that. We include uh, everything else. Um, uh, and we consider the market to be uh, much smaller than, uh, than a lot of these forecasts. But we do expect it to grow quite quickly over the next few years, but not necessarily for the reasons that uh, have been advertised. So, uh, we think uh, we need to look at real people as part of this. So what would inspire these girls, for example, to buy wearable tech? Uh, they are aged... 18 to 35, sharers and cohabitees, uh, urban flats, uh, upmarket areas. And then you have uh, these, this type of person. Uh, she's a uh, similar age, uh, often living with parents, uh, wealthy homes, high disposable income. Um, these are uh, examples of uh, fashion industry early adopters. But are they, are they examples of wearable technology early adopters? And then there's these sorts of people. Um, so there's lots of different types of people in this world. You're not surprised to hear that. But uh, I think technologists tend to forget this. I think that uh, we tend to make technology as a mass market, but we don't really consider who it is that's actually buying this stuff. And I think that when it comes to wearable technology, we need to. Uh, and I think that in a lot of the consumer areas for Internet of Things, by the same token, we need to. So we need to change the way that we think about uh, the consumer and technology. So just to take this example further, we might take one uh, profile of uh, a young urban woman with confident style, mid-range spending habits. And these are the attributes that we would uh, consider for this type of person. Uh, and then they might be interested in a number of the sectors that I've put up earlier. So we've done a lot of work in this area to uh, link uh, different female and male profiles to the different sectors that we've defined in that sector map that I put up earlier. In fact, we've got 20 different female profiles and 15 different male profiles, so 35 in all. And uh, we've then um, looked at the market opportunity from that uh, perspective. So we've got these two profiles as just examples, one male, one female. Um, and then we tried to put that together into a forecast model. And uh, that's where we've got to so far. So um, I'm running out of time. So I'll just say that uh, that's resulted in our first study, which is now available. 
this is the uh, cover. And this, this is supposed to show lots of different applications that are connected together in some way. And uh, we, uh, studies are available. Uh, wearable technology, we feel, has enormous potential. Uh, the study examines how that potential be can be converted to reality. Uh, it analyzes the uh, true market prospects and sizes the market opportunities over all the sectors and application groups that we've defined in that sector map. It explores the issues and challenges holding the market back, and we make recommendations about how these can be resolved. And it examines the potential roles of different market players. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. We've got time for a couple of questions. So, uh, gentleman down here. There's one here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is the likeliness, in your view, of an under-the-skin implanted chip, which could harvest uh, energy from our movements, like an automatic watch? Well, um, the, uh, the, the, the crucial thing there is you've got to get people to accept that they want to do that. Um, so... If they do, if they see an, uh, an advantage in doing that, then uh, no doubt it will happen. My expectation is that it will take an awfully long time to convince many, many people to, uh, to do that. Uh, so unless there's some sort of government regulation that you have to uh, have that kind of stuff, I think That's probably, probably going to make it even more unlikely to force people. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I think anything that uh, uh, inhibits or causes uh, people to uh, have some sort of uh, even a minor operation to, uh, to install it, I think is years away. I think uh, we're talking about uh, personal acceptance of that kind of thing. We've had uh, similar sort of thoughts actually before. There's been the idea of um, embedding tracking devices into uh, children, for example, so, um, so that uh, in South American markets, for example, uh, you can trace them after they've been kidnapped on the expectation that they will be kidnapped sometime. Um, but uh, that's not taken off either because people are really, really concerned about actually messing with uh, the, uh, the health care of their children. So uh, I think there's a lot of things that stand in the way of that. So another question. Quite, quite terrifying. Any more quite questions? Quite terrifying, as you say, yeah. I, I've, got, I've got a question. So if you've got to pick no, out... No, you can't ask a question. You've got to <laughs> Go pick on. out a, a couple of applications that may be short-term and longer-term. So next two to three years and maybe next five to ten years that you think are going to be maybe the hot ones. Oh, what, what, what I think of the yeah, application exactly, there exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, there are lots of wellness applications out there at the moment. And uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about smartwatch type applications and whether they'll actually be useful or not. My expectation is that... Um, the smartwatch applications have not taken off because they actually have quite limited uh, application value. And also, uh, you end up with a lump of, uh, of technology on your wrist that uh, most people uh, are actually moving away from. Uh, most people are uh, uh, taking watches off. Uh, in, in that, that's in the younger generation, should I say. In the older generation, we all wear watches, but we wear... Um, our own design of watches and what we've chosen. Um, and there's a myriad of different uh, models on the marketplace. Um, uh, and um, Swatch, for example, has uh, grown up uh, primarily through having lots and lots and lots of different designs around. And you can choose something that is almost unique to you. Um, I don't see that happening with uh, uh, technology-related um, uh, smart watches. Uh, what they are trying to push is uh, a fairly large device, because it has to have a reasonably large screen. And um, the, um, they all look the same, pretty much. So I think that uh, there's going to be a difficulty in getting that sort of thing to uh, take off. In the longer term, I think that we are uh, talking about um, using multiple devices in uh, body area networks to do lots of different uh, applications and moving from one to the other, depending on what you're doing at the time. And I think that uh, that's going to be a fascinating area, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of technology development uh, in that area. But basically, what we've got to do is to harness the technology to uh, what people are prepared to accept without inhibiting their lifestyles. And that means that we've got to uh, uh, introduce uh, a lot more fashion and style-related consciousness in the uh, uh, technology design process. Excellent. Robin, thank you very much. Super. Thanks.